Diecast cars and your favorite TV shows. We're going to do one of these today. Don't go away. Hey everybody, it is Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And today we are going to be doing a TV car. It is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, a viewer and a very nice guy, uh, Anthony, uh, sent me uh, a bunch of cars. And two in particular. And uh, they were, gosh, it's a, let me see, it's a Corgi Jr. Buick Regal. I think it's a 1974, 73 Cor Corgi Buick Regal. And he actually sent me two of them. Um, one's like a detective's car and one is a taxi cab. Uh, the only major difference is in the glass and the roof line of the car. Otherwise, they're the same. But uh, the idea was to give me some extra parts. And he kind of sent them to me with a little bit of a challenge and said, make Kojak's detective car. So, that's what we're going to do. Let's get right to it. Okay, so today we're going to be taking this ugly, ugly Corgi Buick that my friend Anthony Bellini sent me, along with this uh, Buick taxi cab. And uh, Anthony sent me them and said, hey, turn them into the Kojak car that Corgi had once made. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. He sent me two cars because... Neither one was really great enough to probably get the job done. The first one was the Metropolis uh, Superman Buick detective car, and the other one was their taxi cab, and he figured that uh, there would be enough pieces there to be able to get the job done. So I, I'm up for a challenge. Why not? Let's make Kojak's car. So we start by taking both cars apart, Oddly enough, these things had four posts, which was a real pain in the butt, and uh, plastic bases. You know, I mean, I guess this is why Corgi is Corgi and not, uh, not a Hot Wheel. But anyhow, there was plenty to work with here amongst the two cars, so, but I figured get everything apart, make sure I have all the pieces that available to me, and we can go from there. So... Uh, we've got a couple interiors, we've got some glasses, we've got a, a, a light for the roof. We have pretty much everything we need. Uh, the big problem I'm going to have is this window. See, the passenger window is really a mess. And uh, the cab window actually has the taxi cab light molded into it. So it's, it's, I can probably make it work. But it's, it's going to take some, some finagling to figure out what to do here. So we'll deal with that when we get to it. But the uh, Metropolis police car body is going to be perfect for making Kojak's really ugly, uh, kind of bland, bronzy, brown, metallic paint. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to open up uh, the hot liquid goo and into it will go the police car. Bloop. And into it will go the taxi cab. Bloop. And the warm liquid goo phase begins. Yeah, yeah you've seen me do it with a brush before. This is way easier. I know, I've told you all. How much I loved watching the stripper eat away the paint. And I still do. And I haven't lost it completely. Because see, you can still see in there. Okay, so you can still see it doing its magic. It's just a little bit different of a view. So, I haven't lost that. If I was going to lose it completely, I don't know if I'd be doing it this way. Because I really do love watching the stripper do its thing. Alright, so here's the bodies fresh out of the stripper. I've washed them, I've brushed them. And they're looking pretty good. Um, I don't know if I'll ever need the cab body for anything, but it's ready to go in case I do. The police car body is looking fine. I think we're going to have no problems there. Now, here is going to be a great opportunity. These posts are kind of jinkety, and uh, so I'm using my shielded drilling to kind of uh, 
square things up and get myself a nice little divot in them that's centered on the post so that I can drill out for the screws. Um, normally on, on matchboxes and other carts, I, I won't need to use shielded drilling, but it really can bail you out when, when a post is a little uh, hinky or something like that. So anyhow, I've uh, freshened up the ends of all the posts. Now I can take my uh, my small drill bit. Here I'm going to use four of the 172 screws. So I'm using my smaller drill bit uh, to accommodate that because these posts are, are pretty small. And again, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, put that in the center of the freshly uh, um, drilled off end of the post and start to drill down to make room for the screw. Now, did you know that Bright Vision also makes a short 256? So in addition to their regular 256 screw, which is what I use most of the time, they now make a short one. So instead of me having to hold it against a grinder or anything else like that, I can just order what they want. And rumor has it they're going to come out with a short 172 as well. But we'll have to hold our breath and see what happens there. Fingers crossed. All right, I've got all four posts drilled out. Yes, I said all four. Thank you, Corgi. And now I'm going to go ahead and screw in the uh, button head screws just to make sure that they're going to fit and to protect the holes while I do the rest of the car. Okay, with that done, I've gone ahead and I've brushed off the car with uh, my brass <coughs> bristle brush. And now I can take a pick. And there's just a little bit of residual uh, in some of the grooves and stuff. And I can just go ahead and scrape that off with my pick. And make sure that this car is nice and ready for paint. Okay, I'm going to give this a good throw. Looking over, making sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, I don't need to zinc it or anything like that because this is going to get an opaque paint. Uh, so I'm just making sure there's uh, nothing I need to sand away or any residual I need to pick off of here. And it looks pretty good. So after uh, laying down a little Tamiya Fine Primer, I can go ahead and turn to paint. And for my paint job, I'm going to use uh, a little bit of Tamiya X9 Brown along with uh, a... Uh, what What's the paint number? Let me see here. I'm looking at my paints even as we speak. It's like a bronze. It's, uh, I think it's called Metallic Brown. Yeah, there it is, Metallic Brown X34. So uh, most of this is X34 Metallic Brown Tamiya, and then I'm hitting it up with the X9 Plain Old Brown to make it more brown, because right now out of the jar, the X34 is a little too bronzy looking for my taste, even though it says it's brown. So by adding a little bit of uh, darker brown, I can kind of bring that down to the ugly color that Kojak's car actually was. Now, even though this is a getting an op opaque paint, um, I'm still going to do everything the same way. I thinned the paint down with X20. I used uh, Mr. Uh, color self-leveling thinner as well. And I'm going to start with a tack coat, a couple medium coats, and then some gloss coats. Uh, nice, wet, um, smooth coats. You know, once again, make sure you have good lighting. And, and the thing here is, I've already decided this is not going to get a clear coat. This is what it's going to get. This is supposed to be a dirty old detective's car, okay? It's probably got, like, old sandwich wrappers on the floor, and it probably smells like farts and and broccoli and so you know i i don't think it's going to be very clean it's definitely not going to be very shiny so the only shine it's going to get is whatever the tamiya paint will give it naturally it's not going to get a clear coat over it uh if anything i actually considered using a a little bit of detailing powder to dull it down Okay, so the paint is on. I'm going to set that aside to dry. And now I've decided I can't just put the ugly corgi wheels back on. This needs dog dishes. Okay, what detective car didn't have dog dishes? So I dug through my stuff. I couldn't find anything, so I ended up buying an M2 that had dog dishes in the kit. 
And uh, I actually took the dog dish wheels out of the tires they came with. And then I uh, uh, flipped them around and put them on uh, back in so that they were black walls. Okay, because the ones had, had all this writing on them. So I'm going to have nice dog dish uh, black wall wheels here. And so I've got that. And this should be, they're, they're not too much bigger than the wheels that came on it. So it should just be a matter of trim the axle to the right length, stick these on, and it should look great. Um, so what I'm doing is now I'm digging through my, my mess of parts from the two cars, and I'm going to find the interior and one of the bases that I want to use. And I think this base, was it this one or the next one? I don't know. I picked a base and I put a wheel on one side of the axle and I'm just going to kind of slide it in there. I'm not going to worry about the axle length right now. That's going to look fantastic. All right. And I, I'm probably do the other end too. That way I can set the uh, cab body on top of this just to make sure that the wheels are going to have enough room to fit into this car. Um, I'll, I'll use the cab body because the uh, the real body is still drying. But this is nice. I like these cars like this because the axle slides right into the exact place the old axle was at. Tell me that doesn't look like the wheels of a detective car. And here's the, the taxi cab body set down over it. It does fit. It's going to work out great. Okay. Look at that. That's going to be so perfect, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so I've taken them back off, and uh, the base that I picked is kind of filthy, so we're going to just drop it in a little water. It's got some uh, super clean in, in with it. Well, it does now, at least. And then I'm going to take my toothbrush, and I'm going to scrub it up a little bit, and clean that, and then let it dry. Okay, so here comes one of my issues, and I told you about it up at the beginning. The uh, the glass, the taxi cab glass, had a molded-in top for the taxi cab sign that sticks out of the roof. The uh, glass for the detective car, the passenger window of all windows, was all cracked. It looked like somebody tried to fix it with epoxy or something. It looks like hell. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and polish this whole thing up anyhow using my flits and a, a little Q-tip. I'm going to get this thing all nice and shiny. And um, then once it's all clean and polished, I can kind of put it inside a body and just get an idea of what it's going to look like and see if I can live with that or if I'm going to have to come up with something else. All right, I'm done with the flits. I'm just kind of polishing it up, uh, getting rid of all the residual uh, flits and shining everything up. Now here's the cab body, and we can go ahead and set that inside of it. And here you can see, see that driver's window? And look just how, how oh my gosh, it stands out like a turd in a punch bowl. And, and that I cannot have. I just can't have it. So my solution it was just the front driver's window cut it out so I've got my little razor saw here and I'm very carefully I'm, I kind of scored it while it was in the taxi cab body so I would know where I needed to cut and I'm just kind of sawing that window out using this little razor saw and uh, very very carefully because these things are so brittle and so fragile and it's already damaged I don't want to make matters worse so I'm just being a very light touch letting the saw do the work and I'll just cut this out of here and it'll look like the window is down so it ended up not going to be a big deal uh, a lot easier than trying to figure out a way to put the cab window into this car uh, and it ends up working out really really great the toughest part was right here at the top you see where I had to cut it out and finally I just kind of bent it along where I started cutting and it did break out. But let me tell you something, that was a pucker factor of a 20 because I was worried I was going to crack the whole thing. But I got it out of there and I was able to clean the rest of it up with my exacto uh, knife and it ended up came, coming out really, really nice. And having been polished with the flits, gotten rid of that one piece, once I put it into the car, 
it looked amazing, and I, I, it really totally saved the project uh, and saved me a ton of work trying to figure out a way to work around it. So uh, it worked out great. Okay, after a quick final test fit to make sure everything looked all right, it's already been polished, the broken part's been removed, now it's time to give it a little spin in the gauzy. You've seen me shake it a million times by just kind of rotating it so I don't put a lot of bubbles into it. And uh, take a little pair of tweezers and take it for uh, a little swim in the pool. Down you go, pop that bubble. Bring it up slowly, shake off the excess, and then wick away anything from the corners. And like I said, if you just throw this down on your paper towel, or I mean on your uh, paper plate, it's going to glue itself down and be a real pain to get off of there, and these things are fragile anyhow. So I always put down like a little stick or a toothpick or a Q-tip or anything just so that it's not sitting completely flat on the paper plate. It makes it a lot easier to get it off after it dries. So we'll set that down, and then we put a little cover over it to keep any uh, uh, flying woolly boogers from landing on it and ruining all the hard work that we've done. And we can set that aside to dry. Okay, so while the window is drying, it's time for some detail work. And, uh, you know... Let's break out the Molotow. Okay, very rarely do you see me just coloring stuff on, but in this particular instance, the bumpers are 100% plastic and attached right to the base here. So after pumping a little uh, ink out of the Molotow Chrome pen, just to get it nice and flowy, I can go ahead and just slather it on um, onto the bumpers. Now, the trick with the Molotow is you really got to put it on thick and wet. Seriously. That's where it gets its chrome look from. If you, if you over-color it and over-paint it and overwork it, it's going to get duller and duller and duller. Okay? So, get the tip nice and juicy. Slather it on quick, wet, and fast. And then leave the damn thing alone. All right? That's how you get it to look really nice and chromey. All right, so I'm not wasting any time. I'm being as fast as I can, but making sure I get it on. All right. Now I'm going to do the little headlight inserts in the body. And fortunately, they're just like little pen barrel-shaped indents. So I can just kind of touch the, the nub of the pen right into there. And perfect. Instant chrome headlight insert. Looks fantastic. Alright, then of course we'll get some other details like the tail lights. I don't think that the red would show up really great here. So I'm going to put some uh, Moltau here. Make them silver. Then after it dries I can go ahead and put transparent red Tamiya over it to get me the look I'm looking for. All right, everything is dry. The car is back together, and now I'm doing a little detail painting. I'm painting in the tail lights here with the Tamiya Clear Red, and I gotta say, right now everything is looking fabulous. I'm gonna use a little bit of the Tamiya Transparent Red to paint in the side marker lights. A little Tamiya Transparent Orange paint in the front side marker lights and Kojak's car had a yellow license plate so in the license plate spot I'm going to paint that in nice and yellow so one added little detail of this thing and a little bit of the touch up and we're done Okay, so overall this car has come out way better than I ever thought it could. I'm glad I didn't put any clear coat on it. I think the devil is in the details in this car. And here it is in all its glory. I think it looks fantastic. I'm super happy with it. And as a way of thanking Anthony for sending it to me, along with all the other gifts that he's sent me, Anthony, this car is going to be coming back to you to add to your collection. I hope you love it.
Well, there you have it. Kojak's detective car. I think it came out really super awesome. Um, I love, love, love that Anthony sent me these cars with a, a little bit of a, a challenge. And to show my gratitude to Anthony for sending me these and giving me these, uh, uh, this, this idea, Anthony, this is coming your way. Okay, I'm going to send it back to you, and I hope you love it and enjoy having it. But uh, it came out so good, I think you're going to really, really enjoy it. And i got to be honest with you, uh, I, f I found that this was a really fun project. Doing a TV car like this was super fun. So uh, you may see more of them coming uh, in the future out of Fat Guy Productions here. But... Uh, Anyhow, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the bell, and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. I'll read your comments and talk back with you. I really enjoy that. It's uh, actually the highlight of my day. It's one of the first things I do in the morning is I get up and I look to see what kind of comments are there so I can uh, chit-chat with you guys. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions wishing you the most fantastic, kind of wonderful, Kojaky, chewing on a, a, a lollipop type day. You know, I hope it's just awesome for you. Until next time, be good.